Hey everybody, I'm just about to go out for the day, so I thought I'd do my makeup live for you. Well, live, pre-recorded on a video for two reasons, because a lot of you were very interested in the video that was based on the feature I wrote for The Times yesterday, so I put some of those tips and tricks into action now live. But also just to remind you what real skin looks like. This is what a 59-year-old skin looks like, unfiltered. You see so few unfiltered, unmade up faces on uh, social media that sometimes you just need reminding that what you see in the, the mirror is normal and completely acceptable. This is what I look like without makeup. You'll know that if you live in certain areas of West London and you walk around town on a Saturday, because you'll see me. <laughs> anyway, my skin is super dry at the moment. The barrier is playing up. I've been testing some classic expensive skincare. And it hasn't really agreed with my skin, so I've gone back to my absolute classics, which is I've got lots of this Tellerian La Roche-Posay Dermalergio Serum. It's the calming serum that I love. And then I've topped it off with this, which is the Tellerian. Um, it's the Dermalergio Cream. It's the rich cream. And my skin, honestly, straight away feels better. Those, those products are just like a little hug of calmness in skincare. Look at my hair. No matter how much I look after it. It is still so kinky and coily. Anyway, where do I start? I always start with my concealer first. And at the moment, I am using a combination of the Tiente Edol all over from Lancome. And this, which is my beloved BB crayon. And I'll show you why I like that. So this is the huge doe foot. You can almost apply it all over. In fact, I've seen people, I think Cher Webb used it just as her foundation the other day. So redness around the nose, years of hay fever. A little bit of redness on the the chin but around the eyes i still love my bb crayon and this is the lightest one from arborium and it's very handy because it shows you just exactly where to put it do you remember i said in my video just on the dark circles and that outer edge there i've also got a vein there that i don't like the look of um how attractive am i this is what I look like before I blend out my concealer. And I always blend out my concealer first. This is my It Cosmetics Dual Ended Brush. Um, I'm looking over here because this is where my mirror is, rather than do it in, um, see what I mean by that concealer? You could technically at the weekend just use it on its own, or if you've got great skin that doesn't need much concealing, you could technically use that just on its own. It is like a super lightweight foundation and it's a lovely finish anyway. What I was saying in this that feature yesterday was how to apply a concealer so that it doesn't fall into the creases of your face. And the secret is to avoid the creases, which is this area here, and just put it where needed, which essentially was the dark shadow where I've lost volume in here, which a lot of people get as they get older. And then that outer edge, which tends to be a little bit red. Um, and then what you do is go just up under the eye there. But what you do is you avoid this area, which is where the crepiness is. Let's rub in this, blend, sorry, let's blend in this area. That's that little vein I've got on the top on one side. And then out, and then up under the eye there. And then I go back in, just where it might be slightly darker in at the lash line. There you go. Concealer done, a boring BB cream. Nine times out of ten, it's what I'm wearing. It's running out at the moment, and it really annoys me when it runs out, that you tend to over-deliver it on the back of your hand. You don't need much. I really love this, and I recommend it to all people. I am Dor, Dore, by the way. I recommended this to all people of all ages, of all skin types, but not all skin tones. I apologise to everybody who it doesn't cover, because it doesn't cover a wide variety of skin tones, and I just wish, 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 wish boring would do it in more shades i quite like the fact that it's slightly darker than my skin tone i quite like adding just a hint of a tan with my base i'm not sure if that's breaking any rules but that's what i like to do you can actually see it's slightly darker than my skin tone on the back of my hand there otherwise i'd be medium and then i go over the top of my concealer and that further blends it in Right over the eyebrows. It's that lightweight, you can put it everywhere. Obviously down onto my neck. I have a face that's beginning to take a while to settle into things now as I get older. I mean, it always did when I was younger. 
<laughs> but um, my face will look better in a couple of hours time when the makeup and skincare is all sort of settled in and the eye bags have gone back. Uh, Chanel Healthy Glow Bronzing Cream. And I've made the mistake of leaving the top off so it's slightly dry now, but I still absolutely love it. It comes with an inner sort of um, seal that you need to keep ideally. Don't leave it out all day. Um, it's this amazing soft focus bronzing balm, but unlike the Bobbi Brown one, it doesn't stay sticky. This sort of turns to a powder on the skin. And I just absolutely love it everywhere. You'd normally put bronzer, super subtle. A lot of people I know, for example, Jo Good uses this and doesn't powder it down. She just uses this in place of foundation. She uses this and a bit of concealer. I love that product. I also love the smell of it. Bronzer done. Blusher, I'm gonna use my MAC. Oh, by the way, that brush is just the best face brush of all time. It's the Arden Mineral Buffing, buffing Brush. It's very tatty, but I love it. Right, on to blush. I'm going to use MAC. Uh, oh, goodness. One, five, nine, five. Oh, let's put my good lookers on my magnifying glasses. One, five, nine, S. And then my beloved MAC Peaches Blush. If I don't use this, I use, uh, probably for the evening, I would use NARS Orgasm. It's got a little bit, this is completely matte, but the uh, NARS Orgasm has got just a touch of, I'm almost a professional, uh, just a touch of shimmer to it. And then do the famous Dom Skinner trick, which is you come in from the outside and then buff down onto your cheekbones so you don't get that sort of Pollyanna blush right in the middle. And then on the other side as well. Now, can I just say, if you're watching this and it's super high res, I don't think Instagram is letting me upload super high res videos at the moment. But can I just say, isn't it amazing to see real skin with real lines rather than perfectly flawless faces, which drive me mad because even models don't really have them. I guess maybe when you're 18 and a supermodel, you might. Eyebrows next. This is Charlotte Tilbury Legendary Brows, Tiny Spoolie. It's that sort of tinted brow gel with little fibres in it that sort of keeps your brows in place. This is amazing. This is what I was saying in that Times article about how to get a little mini facelift. Always brush your brows up first. It clings to the hairs, but also cleverly clings to the skin. And you can go backwards and forwards through the brows to create extra volume. But I'm gonna show you that. Look at the difference. I love this product. It's really good. I think it might be the tiniest spoolie I've ever seen on a brow product. And if you don't have those sort of really gorgeous, huge, thick brows that are super fashionable, then you're going to need a smaller spoolie for control. I know a lot of people like Glossier Boy Brow, but um, I find the spoolie too large for me. I like a small spoolie. Again, up. And if you want a budget version of that, the closest I can find is L'Oreal Paris Plump and Set Brow, which has a tiny angled spoolie, slightly larger, very similar formula. Right, what's next? Let's go in with getting rid of the hoods. I was talking about the hoods and making jokes about the hood who was the baddie on um, Thunderbirds. And I wrote in my feature, do you remember the hood? I'm talking about eye hoods, by the way. And um, I said, of course you do. You must do because... <laughs> You're reading this and it was about midlife beauty mistakes so I'm going to go in with MAC Finjan which is a really lovely neutral colour and this is the way I do it and I'm no expert obviously I go in to there and I just create a bit of a faux crease that's applied not blended out and to blend it out, I use something probably like the Hourglass. It's actually a concealer brush, but I really like it. And then to blend it out, I do a naughty trick. I use my Beauty Pie One Powder Wonder. And I just blend it back and forth, back and forth. This not only lightens up the colour, because this is quite a dark shade to do this on. Normally I choose a lighter shade, but it also makes blending out super easy. See how it creates a faux crease. You can also do this with bronzer. I was saying in the feature that uh, I regularly use Hoola bronzer for this. 
And the reason I, I've done that is because I learned that from Sam Chapman. So you can just use your bronzer. You could technically use the Chanel bronzer as well, but obviously that's a cream and this is a powder. And uh, just putting a little bit under the eye there gives the definition to your lashes. It sort of gives the, the sort of a drop shadow that gives you the image of thicker, longer lashes. Back in on the other side. And when you see people apply makeup in tutorials or you see brands selling products, skin never moves, does it? Have you noticed? <laughs> Lips are always perfect and plump and lined and skin never moves. Real skin moves. Right? So what you're doing is you're creating the illusion of a shadow where there isn't one which is what would happen if you had great big sort of madonna open eyes which i've always wanted those really deep set eyes rather than even when i was younger i had um quite heavily lidded eyes next i go in with tight liner this happens to be the jones road brown dark brown eyeliner but honestly i mean i love matt costa Riche. Buried Treasure, um, Coffee, I think it's called. They're all absolutely beautiful. And then this looks a little bit weird. I'm so sorry about this. And then basically I don't really look. I sort of just go in at the waterline and out. Can you see the difference there? So you're in at the waterline, which is that little bit under there. Then I pull my eye out and I go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth in at the base there. So many people have asked me to do this and yet I feel like I've done my, I feel like I've done, done my eye makeup, my makeup tutorials many, many times on here, but I forget that new people join and haven't seen it before. Then I go in with my Black Plum from Bobbi Brown, which one of my followers sent me kindly all the way from Australia. Thank you so much. But any matte brown deep colour will do just to set it. And this is, is idiot proof lining it really is so you hold your eye out again and you just go back in over the the line you've just put in i quite like a big line liner look at the difference you see this is what is beginning to put the definition and i was talking about losing definition as you get older but this is what puts definition back in to your eyes so let's do the other one and this for me, when people say to me, how do you stop your liner from smudging? I think it's because I set it. I think the secret to making makeup last a long time is to use a cream first, then put a powder on the top. I'm going to use MAC in Extreme Dimension Mascara. Now I've got two here. One's quite empty and one's quite full. So I'm not sure which one I'm using here. Well, this is the full one. And this really does give you single stripper lash step lashes, which I quite like. Again, I'm lazy. It's one of those flexible rubber br brushes, which I really like. To me, it doesn't smudge at all. I, there is a waterproof version if you suffer from smudgy lashes. I don't. That's an impressive mascara, right? I do like it. Other favourites are Max Factor Masterpiece Max. And I absolutely love um, Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Lashes, which is like a comb mascara outer lashes there now i have not at this point put any powder on at all um and at this point i would powder my face a lot of people don't they like a dewy look but i like a, a finished effect with a slight sort of powder matte look on it and i'm going to be really naughty and go back in with the same brush this one and i'm going to just powder my chin and this is Beauty Pie One Powder Wonder, my amazing Ubaloos, an all-time favourite. And then I go under my eyes, and I know that seems like a contradiction in terms, but because I have uneven texture and relief under my eyes, so it goes denty here, slightly puffy here, denty here, crepey, I like to mattify that. If you mattify something, you can throw it back. If you add shine to it or a highlighter to it, it'll bring it forward. I don't need to draw attention to my under eyes. So I just really lightly go under my eyes there. And in fact, you can go back in with that, which is the hourglass brush. And just, if you want, just go in there and the outer edges, just to mattify it and it will throw it back. Um, I know that the argument is that you don't want anything matte on areas that are lined, but actually when you get to an age where you are not just hiding imaginary expression lines, but properly, 
static lines that are there forever then i think a slightly demi matte soft focus translucent finish is ideal and then i've got a i mean i've got a couple of lip things here i really love i absolutely love this in fact i will use this there's a beautiful bobby brown this is the crushed jelly shine in honey which i really like um it looks like it's that's packaging is so annoying because it looks like that's empty and it only goes in one end I really love that anyway, super hydrating. But at the moment, I'm absolutely in love with this and I need to read it. And I've done this before with Joe and I still couldn't remember the name of it. It's Lip Power and it's from Armani and this is 106. And the reason I like it is it's that perfect amount of colour, hydration. And it's in sh that shape, so you don't need a liner as well. How nice is that? And that's it. I mean, I've been chatting to you, so it's probably taken 10 minutes, but actually it would really only take me five minutes, IRL, in real life. Right, I'm going out for the day. If you see me in West London today, I will be looking a little bit more glamorous than normal. There you go, that's it. I'll put all of the details of all of the products down below. Let me know if you've tried any of them and what you think. There you go, there are all my products. I put them down below. And if I see you in West London, come and say hello.